The next question is, uh, what is the ruling on Muslims joking about Islamic ordains and rituals like niqab, beard, or wearing pants above the ankles, or mocking those who adhere to them? There are comedians who make a living out of this. Jokes like these even go on in private gatherings among Muslims and non-Muslims. What's the ruling on Muslims participating in this? Uh, at a time, we see the status of the Ummah and what's going on, where there's a war waged on Islam and practicing Muslims. Uh, it's very, very sad to see that uh, there's people who are alleged Muslims who choose to take the route of mocking their brothers and sisters, siding with kufr and kuffar, knowingly or unknowingly. How dare one mock a sister trying to look like Aisha and Hafsa radiallahu anhum. Those who mock niqab and hijab side with the leaders of countries who openly and clearly say niqab will not be welcome in our lands. That's the freedom they offer. Their women have the full right, legal right, to choose to show their bare breast in public, but a modest, honorable Muslim woman can't choose what hijab to wear. That's the freedom they talk about. That's democracy. That's the hukum of jahiliyyah. That's the people who Allah said, Ula'ika kal an'ami balhum adal. That's the filth of kufr. Sisters get dragged physically and through court summons in Europe and other parts of the world because they want to look like Umm Salama and Aisha radiallahu anh. That's part of the problem. They drag them claiming a niqab goes against freedom and dignity when they themselves have absolutely not an ounce of freedom or dignity. Our sisters go all through that, that's a problem. But the bigger problem is those in the ummah who have nothing to joke about but these pious, chaste, struggling, honorable women. Have you ever imagined what a niqabi, for example, goes through on a daily basis? Last week I was in Chicago and a brother invited me to go to a mall that's approximately two hours away from Chicago in the suburbs of Chicago. And for the first time in 17 years, I stepped foot in a mall. And one of the first sights I seen was people glancing at a woman, eyes staring at her from every angle and laughter and mocking. And wallahi, I made dua for from the bottom of my heart. In a place where you never see Muslim, there was a niqabi. That's who they were staring at and mocking. Whereas if someone partially naked showed up, they wouldn't have even bothered to look or joke or mock. Wallahi, allathi la ilaha illahu. Wallahi, I never seen a niqabi in the United States except that I made dua for her. Wallahi. Imagine with me what she goes through in the United States where she can legally wear her niqab let alone other places where she go to jail for it. The glances of the people, the words thrown at her, the laughter and the winking and gestures that she has to see in here, and at times even the physical assault. Imagine her on a red light. To her left is the glancing and the staring, and to the right is the mocking and degrading. And then a Muslim who allegedly loves Allah and the mothers of the believers has the audacity to utter, utter a joke about this sister wearing niqab. Uh, or a brother who's in compliance of a wajib with a lihya, a beard. If you can't support them in their struggle to wear hijab and niqab and grow their beards and wear their clothes above their ankle, then is there anything less than one keeping his mouth shut? How many youth and youngsters seen a video of someone mocking a hijabi or niqabi or bearded brother and heard that jo joke from uh, Muslims and it was embedded in the back of their mind to be repeated over and over again. Some of them memorize these jokes and use it against those who carry out these Islamic obligations. Or how many kids and adults think less of those brothers and sisters who are merely in compliance of the ordains because of these jokes. Even if you adopt the wrong opinion, the weaker opinion, for example of niqab, that it's not fard, you got no business marking them. 
Those same characters who use these matters as tools for laughter, if one was to joke about his mother, what would he tell you? He'd tell you, stop. This is not a joking matter. His mother's not a joking matter. Those women with hijab and niqab are mimicking the mothers of the believers and the daughters of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قُلْ لِأَزْوَاجِكَ وَبَنَاتِكَ وَنِسَاءِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يُدْنِينَ عَلَيْهِنَّ مِنْ جَلَابِبِهِنَ Same with bearded brothers who, and those who raise their pants above the ankles. That's why some scholars said makin Islamic matters or directly makin Allah and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the verses of Allah are all the same. Who's the one growing the beard trying to look like? Musa, Isa, Harun. When he fought, got in a struggle with Musa and Musa grabbed his beard. Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman, and Ali. Not do it a matter in Islam, even if it's obligatory. If it's a matter is obligatory. If you don't do it, not wearing hijab, not wearing niqab, not growing your beard. These matters could be our sin. Sometimes major, sometimes minor. But one's destiny at the end, if he's Muslim and makes salah, even if he doesn't repent, is to heaven, inshallah. Because that's only a sin. The forgiveness of Allah could overwhelm him. The shafa'ah could overwhelm him of the messengers and righteous believers. Or he goes, worst case scenario, to hell for the time of duration of time uh, for the sin. And then he goes back Unto, into heaven. May Allah guard us even from that. One who wears a hijab and mocks it falls in this category. Look at the precise wording that I'm going to say. Those who mock these have committed an act of kufr. There's rules and regulations for takfir and it's a very sensitive issue. And there's fatwa by old and contemporary scholars that substantiate this. That's all we're conveying is the fatwa of the ulama, Abdullah ibn Qa'ud, ibn Ghdayyan, Abdul Razak Afifi, Ibn Baz, and many of the older scholars who all agree on this opinion. In Asbab al Nuzul lil Wahidi, the book, famous book Asbab al Nuzul lil Wahidi, Ibn Jarir, and Ibn Abi Hatim, and Abu Shaykh, and others said, Let me give you the background of the story. The Prophet was heading to Tabuk to fight, and on the way there they camped. So there was the close knit with the Prophet ﷺ who camped with the Prophet and another group who were farther away who camped by themselves. Here's how the story unfolds. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhum narrates what happened. He said during the battle of Tabuk, a man in the other camp, in the second camp said, we have not seen like these reciters of the Quran. You see those guys who recite the Quran? مَا رَأَيْنَا مِثْلَ قُرَّائِنَا هَؤُلَا أَرْغَبُ بُطُورًا They like to fill their bellies with food, greedy bellies. Their tongues are lying tongues. Big bellies and untruthful tongues. They're mocking reciters of the Quran. And they're the most cowardly when the combat happens. Basically, they eat a lot, they lie, and they're cowards. They're talking about reciters of the Quran. Mocking them and joking around. فَقَالَ رَجُلٌ فِي الْمَجْلِسِ كَذَبْتَ وَلَكِنَّكَ مُنَافِقَ A man sitting with them said, You're a liar, you're a hypocrite. Based on what he heard from him, he said, You're a hypocrite. And the Prophet ﷺ never denounced this man for calling him a hypocrite. لَأُخْبِرَنَّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. I'm going to go tell the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. فَبَلَغَ ذَلِكَ النَّبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ The matter reached the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Either the man went and told him, or Allah had told him, or most likely it was both of them. Allah had revealed, and then this man went and told him what that man had mocked the reciters of the Qur'an with. Abdullah ibn Umar said, فَأَنَا رَأَيْتُهُ مُتَعَلِّقًا بِحِقْبِ نَاقَةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ تَنْكُبُهُ الْحِجَارَةِ I seen him grabbing the bridle of the horse of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the, it dragging him. He's grabbing the horse and it's dragging him on the stones. He's hanging because he wants to speak to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's telling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He's saying, O Prophet of Allah, it was only idle talk and just play. 
It was idle talk and just play. Note, he didn't even say we were mocking. He didn't even think of it as mocking. He said it was idle talk and just play. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling him, Abillahi wa ayatihi wa rasulihi kuntum tastahzi'oon. La ta'atadhiru qad kafartum ba'da imanikum. Was it Allah, his messenger and his revelation that you scoff and mock? Make no excuse. Don't even think about apologizing. You have disbelieved after your confession of belief. You have disbelieved after you were believers. Allah reveals in the Quran ayat about this. Let's go through them. وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ لَيَقُولُنَّ إِنَّمَا كُنَّا نَخُوضُ وَنَلْعَبُ If you ask them, O Muhammad, they will say, it was idle talk and play. That's all it was, it was idle talk and play. This sentence shows, pay attention, that they didn't even really mean to mock. They didn't reach the level of mocking. Because their reply was, كُنَّا نَخُوضُ وَنَلْعَبُ It was idle talk and play, not mocking. They didn't say we were mocking. We weren't ridiculing. They didn't say, Inna kunna nastahzi. They said, Kunna nakhudu wa nalab. It was idle talk and play. They didn't say we were mocking. That wasn't even their intention. Mocking is here. Idle talk and play was here. And in some narration, it was that they said, Oh, Prophet, we were just talking because we wanted the distance to become shorter with just idle talk. Allah said to them in the Quran, Qul abillahi in Allah. وَقُلْ أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَهْزِئُونَ In Allah, in Allah, His verses and His revelation and His messenger, do you scoff and mock? You didn't find nothing else to joke about? No, these people focused. Did they mock Allah directly? No. Did they mock the Qur'an directly, verses in the Qur'an? No. Did they mock the Prophet ﷺ directly? No. They mocked the reciters of the Qur'an. Then why when Allah was denouncing them said, in, you mock Allah, the verses and the messenger? Why didn't Allah say, you mock the reciters of the Qur'an? He said, you mock Allah? the messenger, and the verses, when all they did was mock reciters of the Qur'an. They mocked the reciters of the Qur'an because of their Islamic significance, so it's as if they mocked Allah, the verses, and the messenger. That's the point Allah is trying to get to you. See how dangerous it is? It's no joke and it's no game. They mocked reciters of the Qur'an. Allah responded saying, you mock Allah, and his messenger, and the verses? You mock a bearded Muslim for his beard? You mock Allah, his verses, and his messenger? You mock a niqabi for her niqab? We say, you mock Allah, his verses, and his messenger? You mock a hijabi or a bearded brother? We say, you mock Allah, and his messenger, and the verses? The final judgment has been entered by Allah. لا تعتذروا لا تعتذروا قد كفرتم بعد إيمانكم. Don't apologize. No excuse. Make no excuse. Don't even think about apologizing. You've become disbelievers after you were believers. And here's an important detail. Pay attention to this detail. Those people Allah declared kuffar were not hypocrites before this matter. Your hair scholars call them hypocrites. There were hypocrites who fought and went along with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Like Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Abi Salul who went with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who was a known hypocrite. If scholars refer to these here who mocked as hypocrites based on what they did of mocking, then yes, they did become hypocrites in kuffar because of that. But some scholars allege they were hypocrites before they even mocked, and they were just going along with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu That's wrong. They were believers fighting with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were putting their lives on the line for the sake of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Yet they were rendered non-believers for a little joke they made. 
What can one say about those who never even broke a sweat in Allah and His Messenger's rightful cause? Yet they want to mark rituals in sunnas in ordains. The solid proof that they were not originally hypocrites, as some scholars say, is in the verse. Kafartum ba'da imanikum. You've disbelieved after you were believers. After you were believers. After you were believers. Kafartum ba'da imanikum. Some scholars go on to say, they went too extreme to say, that they were believers in their tongue, but not in their heart. Meaning they were hypocrites. So Allah said believers, as in believers in tongue, but not in the heart. They're trying in reality to say that Makin did not cause them to become disbelievers. They were already hypocrites. As they were only believers by their tongues. However, Ibn Taymiyyah responded to this and said, Allah never calls a hypocrite a believer in the Quran just because he believed by his tongue. They were disbelievers, they were believers, and they were rendered disbelievers. Allah said it. Ba'da imanikum. They were in reality believers because Allah called them so. Otherwise, Allah would never call hypocrites believers even if they believed in their tongue but not in their heart. Another point. There are some matters where as a rule in takfir, ignorance of it being kufr is an excuse. It could be an excuse that I didn't know it was, it was called me to, to be a kafir. Ibn Taymiyyah in Kitab al-Iman said, these people here did not think that they were committing kufr. Yet they were still considered kufar. He's saying, mocking and ridiculing Islamic matters is kufr, even if one did not know it will make him a kafir. Sulaiman al-Alwan, Sheikh Sulaiman al-Alwan said, this verse is clear proof in kufr of one who mocks Allah, his messenger in verses. If he considers it halal or if he considers it haram. Merely mocking renders one an apostate by ijma of all the scholars. Even if he did not mean the mocking but was merely joking and playing. In na'fu an ta'ifatim minkum, the end verses is na'fu an ta'ifatim minkum, na'adhib ta'ifatim bi annam kanu mujimeen. Some repented and others didn't. This applies to mocking punishments of Allah. Like heaven or hell or aspects of hell or aspects of heaven. This applies to mocking those who ordain the good and forbid the evil and people who go along with that uh, it applies to mocking like we already said salah or aspects of salah even sunnah salah not necessarily wajib salah even sunnah salah mocking that or those who pray because of their salah or someone who shortens their thobe or their pants in accordance to the prophet's teaching or one who has a beard because of his beard, or a hijabiyya for her hijab, or a niqabiyya for her niqab, or a siwak, a mere siwak, the toothbrush. This is by the rules of the scholars who know the rules and regulations of takfir, because as I said, it's a sensitive issue. And next point, some scholars divided the, the, the market into two categories, direct statements and writing, something direct. Right, or you say it, that's direct. But the other category, which is just like that, is gestures. You see someone in niqab, they smirk, smile, laugh, they stick a tongue out, or, you know, there's many type of gestures where you show how that you're mocking someone. Any of that is just as though one said something. The rule in the both types of mocking is the same. The next point is essential point. Do not ever sit with anyone who goes near this issue. If there's a gathering and joking kicks off related to this matter over here, if you attend an event where this goes on, or there's a comedy show, or a TV show, or a YouTube show, or anywhere, flee with your iman like there's a lion behind you out to get you before you lose your iman. Flee and run away. The rule in Islam is that when there's something haram, you don't participate in it. You don't get, go near it, you don't support it. Like zina. zina. Allah said, don't go near zina. He didn't say, don't come here. He said, don't go near it. You don't sit on an alcohol table, alcohol where, a table where there's alcohol and say, I'm not drinking. You don't do that. You don't go to a casino and you say, I'm not gambling. 
That's haram. In matters of haram, you don't go near the haram. You don't participate in it. You don't condone it. You don't support it. This is matters worse because it's specific verse about not going near it in the Quran. Allah says in the Quran, and it's already been revealed to you in the book. And إِذَا سَمِعْتُمْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ يُكْفَرُ بِهَا وَيُسْتَهْزَأُ بِهَا And إذا سمعتم آيات الله يكفر بها ويستهزأ بها That if you hear the verses of Allah يكفر بها means disbelieved in ويستهزأ بها means marked فلا تقعدوا معهم حتى يخوضوا في حديث غيره Don't go near them Don't sit with them Until they engage in another talk Until they change the subject Don't go near them A verse clear in the Quran Don't sit and watch a comedian who mocks any aspect of Islam. Any tiny aspect of Islam. Don't ever sit with a relative of yours, with a friend of yours, who utters a joke pertaining to mocking any Islamic issue or those who practice it. Ever. It only gets worse when you hear those so-called du'av ars today, in the United States especially, who want to give the look that they're all cool and all that, and make their audience seem that they're all cool, and then sit and mock issues of Islam. Forgetting this important aspect of Islam. Allah tells them, If you listen to it, you participate it, you don't walk off, If you stay with them, you are like them. Like them what? Kuffar, like them. Unless you forbid the munkar and tell them they're wrong and walk away, then you are with them. Then the end of the verse says, Allah is gathering the hypocrites and the kuffar in hellfire all together. And note something very unique about this end of the verse. Allah says he's gathering the munafiqeen and the kuffar in hellfire. This is the end of the verse. In the hell. Where in the beginning of the verse, he's talking about those who mock. So the end of the verse, tied to the beginning of the verse, is the icing on the cake to prove the kufr of one who mocks Allah and his messengers or those who follow in accordance with any of that and you mock them or anyone mocks them because of that. Wal-iyadu billah, it's one falls, it's a matter of kufr and iman. Whoever in, is involved in this, let him go or was involved in this, let him go take a shower and say shahada and repent not to ever do this again. So he can rejoin the masses of the Muslim ummah. Umma. Sayyid Sabiq in his book Fiqh Sunnah, which you all have it, he said a believer who gives his shahada and becomes Muslim can never be considered a kafir unless his heart and breast is overwhelmed with kufr and he adopts kufr and acts upon it. And then he mentions examples of exemptions from that. And he said, mocking the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. al Hanbali, the big Imam, the Hanbali Imam, in his Kitab al Rawd al Murabba. He mentions this issue. So does Ibn Qudama in Al Mughni. So does other scholars like Ibn Al Mulaqqan in Al Tadhkira, famous scholars. All said that Makin is Kufr. So did the ones I just mentioned earlier Abdullah ibn Qa'ud, Ibn Ghdayyan, Al Afifi, Sheikh ibn Baz, and others. Makin, this is what I relate to you from what the ulama and the Salaf say is kufr according to their rules and regulation derivative from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Allah does not leave those who mock His Qur'an and His Sunnah as believers without humiliation in this life before the life after. SubhanAllah, it's a Sunnah of Allah. He always humiliates them in this life. In Bukhari and Muslim, there's an authentic hadith. In Muslim, it's a Christian man who became a believer and then rendered a non-believer. In Muslim, it's a man from Bani Najjar. He used to, he, he read Al-Baqarah and Ali Umran. And he used to write for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was a Christian and he became a believer. Then he went back to being a Christian. Then he said, Muhammad knows only what I wrote for him. Because he used to write for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, I used to write for him the revelation. فَأَمَاتَهُ اللَّهِ Years went on, years went on. فَأَمَاتَهُ اللَّهُ فَدَفَنُوا فَأَصْبَحَ وَقَدْ لَفَضَتُ الْأَرْضِ He went, they buried him after he died. The next morning they found him on the surface of the earth. فَقَالُوا هَذَا فِعْلُ مُحَمَّدْ وَأَصْحَابَهُ لَمَّا هَرَبَ مِنْهُمْ 
نبشوا عن صاحبنا فألقوا Muhammad and his friends came here at night, dug up the grave, and took him up to the surface. They're evil people who came. This is what they're basically saying. Muhammad and his people came and dug up and put him on the surface of the earth. Next day what they did, The second time, they dug up the grave, deeper grave, they put him in there. The next morning they find him on the surface again. So now it's the third day. فَقَالُوا هَذَا فِعْلُ مُحَمَّدٍ They said this is the action. هَذَا فِعْلُ مُحَمَّدٍ وَأَصْحَابَهِ نَبَشُوا عَنْ صَاحِبِنَا لَمَّا هَرَبَ مِنْهُمْ فَأَلْقُوهُ They said this is Muhammad and his friends. They dug up his grave and they brought this man to the surface again. So now it's the final time. فَحَفَرُوا لَهُ So they dug up for him. وَأَعْمَقُوا لَهُ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَسْتَطَاعُ they dug up for him a very, very, very deep grave, as deep as they could. And then, the next morning, فَأَصْبَحَ وَقَدْ لَفَظَتُ الْأَرْضِ فَعَلِمُوا أَنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنَ النَّاسِ فَأَلْقُوهُ وَفِي رِوَايَةٍ فَنَبَذُوهُ They woke up, they found him after that big grave, on the surface again. So they knew, was it from Muhammad Sallallahu or his men? They left him and abandoned him. And let me, before I go to the next question, a very last note. There's a difference between mocking someone for man him, for himself and for, for Islamic significance. For example, a bearded man, if you mock him for being fat, skinny, talks funny or something, that's a sin. Could be a major or small sin. You don't mock no one, but that's a sin. However, if it relates to Islam, if it goes to the beard, then that's when it becomes kufr. There's a distinguishing between the two. One is sin, one is an act of Kufr. So you have to distinguish between those two matters. Make uh, uh, There's plenty of matters to joke about. Be truthful and joke. The Prophet and the Sahaba joke. So why we gotta go to areas that are haram? Well, it's nice to have fun, but keep them in the halal. The next